For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, and that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let us eat at home, that you should come not together unto condemnation, and the rest will I set in order when I come. I want everybody to bow their heads for a moment. Now I want you to begin to talk to the Lord in your own way. If there's anything that will cause your relationship to be hindered with God, I want you to take this moment and ask Him for forgiveness this morning. It's just that simple. He's our Heavenly Father. He will never leave us nor forsake us. But whenever we are not in right standing with Him, all we have to do is just come to Him. Say, Lord, I'm sorry. Forgive me of my sins. And when you ask him to cleanse you, he'll do it instantly, and you're back in right standing with him. And so, Father, we thank you on this morning for this time of coming before you with the Lord's Supper. Father, I thank you right now that as we partake of the bread and drink of the blood, Father, I thank you right now, O oh God, that you begin to touch our body in the name of Jesus. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And we'll praise you and magnify you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us prepare ourselves. Oh, <laughs> 
is the eve of the Lord's Supper. We're going to partake of the bread and drink of the wine together.
Amen. We will have a musical on tomorrow, and as Bishop said, it's not a pre-musical because the musical starts the convocation and the music department holds a great deal of, of, of strength in the convocation. Amen. So the convocation starts tomorrow at 7 o'clock p.m. with the musical, and the location is at Second New Guide Missionary Baptist Church. The address is 1424 South Dilton Street, and that's in Metairie, Louisiana, and the musical begins at 7 o'clock p.m. Amen. And we thank God for our uh, wonderful uh, minister of music, Elder Donnell, for pulling this all together for us. And I know that we are going to have a wonderful time on tomorrow. So don't stay home on tomorrow. Come out to our musical. And the lineup for this week is on Tuesday will be Superintendent Mark Ellis. He's an international Sunday school president and located in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And on Wednesday, our speaker is Bishop James Whitehead, and he is the editor of the YPWW Topics. He comes out of Detroit, Michigan. On Thursday, we will have none other than our Greater New Orleans Jurisdiction Supervisor of Women, Mother Gloria Major Brown. And everybody said Friday night. Friday night is Friday's our official day. And on Friday night, we will be hearing from our bishop, Bishop Charles E. Brown. Amen. And we're just so excited. We have our uh, morning services beginning on Wednesday. Our morning services begin on Wednesday, Wednesday through Friday, and they are at 10.30 a.m. So bring your family, bring your friends. Come out and share with us at the Greater New Orleans Jurisdiction of Louisiana Annual Convocation. You don't want to miss it. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. Sister Rose McDonald for leading us. Amen. In our announcements. I want to also make special mention on that Thursday night, on that Thursday night, we have various gifts from here at the Prayer Tower Church of God in Christ who will be receiving their evangelist missionary license on that Thursday night. And I want to take the time to celebrate our own, amen, who will be receiving on that night. Amen. Amen. Missionary Janine Dim, amen. Can you step up? Matter of fact, come on up. Up. Come on up. Come on up. I'm sorry. I know I put you on the spot. Sister Rose McDonald, come on up. Amen. Missionary Jesse Peck, come on up. Sister Kim Randolph, come on up. Lady Shaman Moore, come on up. Amen. I want to thank God for these ladies. I want to say to you all, amen. I want to say to you all publicly, thank you for your service here at the Prayer Tower Church of God in Christ. Because truly, ministry wouldn't be the same without you. And I want to thank you for your service. I want to thank you for your time. I want to thank you for your labor of love. And we want to celebrate you and honor you and support each and every one of you for the works that you have done in the kingdom of God. And on Thursday night, we are coming out to celebrate, celebrate, celebrate. Can we give it up for these awesome women of God? Hallelujah. Amen. Well, it's time to give at the prayer tower. 
and it's time to receive. Amen. I want to challenge you today in your giving. I want to challenge you today in your giving. I want you to listen to me very, very clearly. I want you to listen to me very, very clearly. We know the word of the Lord says, Give and it shall be given back unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. How many of you believe in the word of God? Amen. I believe. I believe the word of God. I believe the word of God. Let me tell you, every time I have literally put seed in the ground, I always reap the harvest because of the seed that I sow. Whenever you put seed into good ground and water that seed, you will always receive a harvest. The principle has not changed. God has not changed. And God loves a cheerful giver. And so this morning, I want to challenge you to be a cheerful giver on this morning. Not because you are forced to give. Not because somebody has, somebody has told you you're not going to receive this or you're not going to receive that for what you have given. I want to challenge you today to be a cheerful giver. For God loves a cheerful giver. Do I have any cheerful givers in the room today? Hallelujah. So I want you to give this morning as God has blessed you to give. Amen. And honor the Lord. Amen. With your giving. Amen. And so on your tithe and your offerings. Amen. Because it's your giving that helps fulfill the work of the ministry. There can be no lights without your giving. Amen. There cannot be any music without your giving. There cannot be any toiletries or anything of that nature without your giving. Amen. The church has to take care of the insurance and all those different kind of things. There's so many different aspects of the ministry that's done and we're able to do because why? You all have been cheerful givers. And I want to thank you so much, Brett Tower and friends, for sowing into the work of the ministry so that we can do ministry with a spirit of excellence. Amen? Amen. Sister Joan Brown is coming with our offering envelopes. Amen. If you need an envelope, lift your hand. Amen. Yeah, just lift your hands. Amen. And she will serve you on this morning. Good morning, everyone. And you definitely do not want to forget about blessing our pastor on this morning. I will be collecting our passes on her. Thank you.
Amen. Feel free to come and worship with us at any time. I believe that God is doing some great, great things. And I honor God for his grace, his mercy, and his favor. Let us go before the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you today for your anointing that makes preaching easy. Dear God, I decrease so that the Holy Spirit may increase within me. Use these lips of clay for your glory. Father, none of me, but all of you. And we'll forever praise and magnify your name. In Jesus' name. To God is the Amen. To you have your Bibles today, I want you to go with me to Genesis. Genesis chapter 37. Genesis chapter 37. Seven, Genesis chapter 37. Genesis chapter 37. When you have it, say amen. Genesis chapter 37. We want to get, begin reading at verses 13 through 18. Genesis chapter 37, verses 13 through 18. And Israel said unto Joseph, Do not thy brethren feed the block in Shechem? Come, and I will send thee unto them. And he said to him, Here am I. And he said to him, Go. I pray thee, see whether it be well with thy brethren, and well with the flocks, and bring me word again. So he sent him out of the vale of Hebron, and he came to Shechem. And a certain man found him, and behold, he was wandering in the field. And the man asked him, saying, What seekest thou? And he said, I seek my brother. Tell me, I pray thee, where they feed their flocks. Verse 17. And the man said, they are departing hence. For I heard them say, let us go to Dothan. And Joseph went after his brethren and found them in Dothan. And when they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. I want to read verse 18 one more time. And when they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. And as always, because of your word, Father, I'm thinking on another level. I'm talking on another level. I can change. This message today comes to celebrate those who have been faced with various circumstances in their lives and survive to testify of it. Revelations chapter 12, verse 11 says, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. What an action do I have any witnesses in here today who can testify that they have gone through some situations and they've made it out? Do I have anybody here today who can say I have been through some hard times in my life that I just didn't know how I was going to make it through, but yet I made it on the other side? Do I have anybody here who can be honest and testify that things are not always what they seem, but if I can just hold on to God and his unchanging hand, he will see me through. 
For a few moments on today, I want to minister in your hearing from the subject, I am a survivor. Look at somebody and say, I am a survivor. Look at somebody else and say, neighbor, I am a survivor. The book of Genesis contains some of the most popular stories in the Bible, including the story of Adam and Eve. Noah and the great flood, and the story of Joseph's brother selling him into slavery, which is in our lesson today. And despite its popularity, there are many unknowns about the regions of the book, and in particular, who wrote the book of Genesis and the Bible and when it was written. The book of Genesis is an important text because it is not only the first book in the Torah, but it's also the first book in the entire Bible. Yeah. And short, when the book of Genesis is about the regions of the Israelites, and ancient Jewish people who settled in ancient Near East and worshipped their God Yahweh. The book of Genesis is a Greek translation of the Hebrew meaning a region. The Hebrew title of this text is Bereshit, which is the first word of the text, and it means in the beginning. Yeah. Genesis contains 50 chapters, beginning with the creation story in chapter 1, and ending with the death of Joseph in chapter 50. In 1990, somebody say 1990, there was a female singing and rapping group called Girls Time, which ultimately had a name change to Destiny's Child. This group was formed by Beyonce Knowles at the age of nine, who assembled a group of her friends. In 1992, the group lost the hit show on Star Search. Anybody remember that, remember that show, Star Search? Then three years later, that was dropped from their recording contract before an album had even been released. This group ended up facing some internal problems that ultimately caused changes. And yes, they faced various disappointments and challenges within the group which caused some decisions to be made and the group went down to three. The final group members ended up being Beyonce Knowles. Kelly Rowland, and Michelle Williams. Beyonce wrote a hit song called Survivor. Do I have anybody here today who can testify that I am a survivor? I've been through some heartaches and some disappointments, but I am a survivor. And I don't understand what you may be going through right now, but with the group's name, it lets me know that I am destiny's child. I have a purpose and I have a plan from God that he will bring me to the place that he's assigned me before the foundations of the world. Survivor was inspired by a joke that a radio station had made about the fact that three members had already left the group comparing the band to the reality game show Survivor. Beyonce was inspired to take the native comment and turn it into a positive one by writing a song out of it and pinning these lyrics. She said, now that you're out of my life, I'm so much better. You thought that I'd be weak without you, but I'm stronger. You thought that I'd be broke without you, but I'm richer. You thought that I'd be sad without you, I laugh harder. You thought that I would grow without you, now I'm wiser. Thought that I'd be helpless without you, but I'm smarter. You thought that I'd be stressed without you, but I'm chilling. You thought I'd be selling without you, sold three million. I'm a survivor. I'm not gonna give up. I'm not gonna stop. I'm gonna work harder. I'm a survivor. I'm gonna make it. I will survive. Keep on surviving. Yeah. And so she had to make an anthem that I am a survivor. And when I ask them, I want to let you know today that you too are a survivor. The fact that you are sitting here today lets me know that you have survived this pandemic. 
that there are so many people around the world who have lost their lives and who have lost their way due to this pandemic called COVID, but yet you are still here in the land of the living, which lets me know that God still has a purpose and a plan for your life. It lets me know that God is with me in spite of everything that I'm going through. It lets me know that God is with me in the good times. It lets me know that God is with me in the bad times. It lets me know that God is with me. So our message today comes out of Genesis chapter 37 with the survivor by the name of Joseph. Uh -huh. Joseph was the second youngest of 12 brothers born to Jacob yeah. who was called Israel. Yeah. He was the first son through the favorite wife Rachel. Yeah. In Genesis chapter 37 verses 3 and 4 he read now Israel loved Joseph more than any of his other sons. Because he had been born to him in his old age, and he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brothers saw that their father loved him the more than them, they hated him and could not speak a kind word to him. This passage also discusses two dreams Joseph had that argued, that angered his brothers about the dreams indicating that will soon come to pass. Now, I don't know about you this morning, but whenever you find one sibling that seems like they're a little bit more favored than another, it seems like there's always an issue that arises. You know, you got siblings your own self. You got that sibling that seems like you just get away with anything. Seem like it seems like stuff that you would easily get in trouble for, but seem like the other siblings just seem like they can just get away with murder. Anybody ever heard anybody say that before? Everything you do just seems like you just get away with murder. Mama never tell you nothing. Daddy never tell you that just seems like you can get through it. And there's something about when you are going through sibling relationships, yeah. it can cause you to go through some problems, some conflicts, and some disappointments. But I want to let you know today that in spite of everything that you may be dealing with, God is the ultimate judge. It's important for us to find ourselves as being people of peace. And the Bible records that Joseph had a dream. And he began to tell his dream about his older siblings bowing down to him. And I know it didn't make sense at the time, but it's so ironic that this story is happening because whenever God is moving, everybody simply does not understand. Everybody don't understand why you got to be the chosen one. Everybody don't understand why you got to be the favorite of God. But do I have any witnesses in here today who can testify? It doesn't matter what man say, if God be for me, who can be against me? And so they hated him because of his dream. And I want to pause right here to let you know, you can't tell your dreams to everybody. Because everybody won't believe in your dreams. Elder Russell, you got these, this book that you have wrote, you got these CDs that you have put out. I'm sure you got bigger dreams on the inside of you, but you cannot tell your dreams to everybody because people who are with you today won't be with you tomorrow. Why? Because they feel like you think you're too much. You, you think like you're better than everybody else. You act like you can't, uh, like you're just going to uh, blow up overnight. But I want to let somebody know that God plus one is the double charge. And one day Joseph traveled to check on his brothers while they were watching their sheep. And his brothers plotted against them, threw him in an empty well, and later told him, as a slave to some traveling Midianites, yeah. applying animal blood to his coat of many colors, then returned home and made Jacob believe his son had been killed yeah. by wild animals. Yeah. There's always somebody plotting on your demise. Oh, Y'all know the songwriter said they smile in your face. All the time trying to take your place, them backstabbers. Y'all know, know them backstabbers. They got backstabbers in the church. They can sit in the church and act like nothing is going on, but yet they be the biggest hell raisers. 
They can sit in the church and act like everything is going good and soon as church is over. That's when they're having side conversations and doing all these different things. But that's why it's so important to keep your eyes on Jesus. Because if you look at what's going on with people in the church house, you will end up missing God. And there are so many people who say, I've been hurt in the church. Yeah, you've been hurt in the church. You haven't been hurt by the church. You've been hurt in the church by people who are in the church. And I want to say to you today that you're supposed to be the church. And I want to ask you this question this morning. What does your church look like? No, your church don't have big cathedrals. and No, your church doesn't have stained glasses. What does your church look like? Is your church full of smoke? Is your church full of crown? Is your church full of hidden intensity? Is your church full of marijuana? What does your church look like? Does your church have all kind of pests? going on on the inside? Do your church have all kinds of rights and roaches going on the inside? That's come to destroy you. That's why it's important that you got to allow yourself to be cleaned up from the inside. Because when you allow God to clean you up from the inside, he'll cause your morning to turn into day. Joseph was taken to Egypt and sold to the captain of the guard, Potiphar. As a household slave, Joseph later falsely accused of attempting to rape Potiphar's wife. And he was thrown into prison. Let me pause right there. Sometimes when you are going through doing what God has called you to do, you will face some trials. Yeah, everything is not always going to be good. I know you thought that your journey of faith wasn't going to have no problems and you thought your journey of faith you wasn't going to go through nothing. But I submit it to you today is that when you sign up to be on this side of the kingdom, that's when all hell breaks loose. That's when you begin to go through all kinds of problems and that's when you begin to go through all kinds of storms. But it's so important that you put your faith and your trust in God. Because when you put your faith and your trust in God, He will always be there for you. Yes, he will. Joseph having a dream put him in this situation where he was set up to be killed by his brothers. And then one was like, no, we can't kill him. Then number two, they set him up and sold him into slavery. Now he's locked up, and they won't let him out. Locked up, they won't let me out. They won't let me out. I've been locked up. Y'all know, y'all, 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 y'all like acting bougie here this morning. But I'm coming, I'm coming for a different church this morning. I've been locked up, they won't let me out. And so, him being locked up, Potiphar's wife saw a handsome young man. And she felt like, I can just have a piece of Joseph. Yes. But yet Joseph, in all of his might, in all of his trust, he put his complete trust in God, and he put his complete faith that he won't change the course of the direction for his life. Yes. And so Potiphar's wife tried to sleep with him. And so while in prison, Joseph accurately interpreted the dreams of two of Pharaoh's servants who were also incarcerated. And later, Pharaoh had a disturbing dream no one could interpret. And one of the servants uh, Joseph had previously helped him suggested to Pharaoh that Joseph could interpret the dream. Don't let nobody exploit your gift. I'm going to say it again. Don't let nobody exploit your gift. I'm going to say it again. Don't let nobody exploit your gift. Because see, when you walk in a prophetic anointing, people will come up to you and say, Oh, you got a word for me. You got a word for me. You got a word for me. No, if God ain't giving it to me, I don't got no word for you. Because if you speak without God speaking, then you are prophesying. And I thank God that when we prophesy, we prophesy in part. No prophet knows the whole picture. Let me teach you something here. That's why I'm very careful and selective who I allow to stand to bring the word in this pulpit. It didn't just start here. 
It started many years ago when I first started pastoring. I just what the pastor that just was. Oh, I'm in. I'm, hey, doc, I'm in town. Uh, I'm trying to come to see if I can uh, preach the word at your church. No, 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 no. God didn't invite. Didn't tell me to invite you, so I'm not inviting you now. Because if I just allow anybody to stand and speak the word of God, I'm held accountable for everything that goes on in the church. And there are people who will come and they will preach and they will prophesy just to get a dollar off of you. And if your pastor is not up on Sunday morning trying to fleece your pockets, I'm not going to allow somebody else to come up here and prophesy and try to fleece your pockets as well. I'm supposed to be the protector of the sheep. So it's important to know who's speaking over your life. And you can't eat from everybody anyway. Because everybody are not clean. They can stand and preach the word, but what were you doing before you came up here to preach the word? Don't just try to lay hands on me, and when you try to lay hands on your hands smell like marijuana, you're unclean. And just because they have a title too does not mean anything as well. That's right. That's right. That's why I encourage you to follow me as I follow Christ. Amen. The day you see me not following Christ, then you got a problem. Yes. The day you see me stop living what I'm preaching, then you got a problem. That's the day I want you to call me on my hands. Why? Because I'm held accountable to you and I'm held accountable to God. And so Joseph interpreted Pharaoh's dream in such a powerful way that he was appointed second in command over Egypt. And I want to let you know that promotion will come when people see the oil on your life. Yes, because people feel that they can, uh, if they can see the oil on your life, they feel like they can use the gift that's on your life to get them where they're trying to be. But you got to stay strong and stay in the word. That's why the Bible says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against God. And Pharaoh's dream predicted seven years of famine. And during the famine, Joseph's oldest brothers came to Egypt to buy food. And I'm almost done. And they did not recognize Joseph. Now 20 years old, then, he treated them harshly, pretending that he thought they were spies. Joseph kept one brother in prison until the others brought their youngest brother, Benjamin, back to Egypt to prove that they were not spies. They brought Benjamin with them on the return trip, and after a series of all kinds of twists and turns that included his brothers bowing down to them, in fulfillment of Joseph's dream, Joseph revealed himself to his brothers. And it's so important to know that God will cover you and God will put a veil on you while he's perfecting that when he's placed on the inside of you. Yeah, I know it may not make sense and I know I know you may, may want to be elevated and I know you might want to do some great and powerful and mighty things, but I want to encourage you to work where you're planning. Because when you begin to work where you're planning, God will perfect that is on the inside of you so that it can bring glory to the kingdom of God. God will perfect that's on the inside of you to bring his anointing out of your life that's going to destroy yours. God will perfect that what's on your life so that he can use you for the kingdom. And so we find now in our story where Joseph was the one that was envied by his brothers and now he's the one that has to sustain his brothers. Yes, my Don't despise where you are right now. Amen. Don't despise your heartbreak. Yes. Don't despise your pain. Yes. Don't despise your agony. Yes. Because the same people who misuse you today will be the same people that will have to come back and use you tomorrow. I'm preaching better than y'all talking up in here this morning. And so, I'm going to leave you with three things, and I'm going to take my seat. Number one, you have to understand that God is the ultimate vindicator. He said, vengeance is mine, Brother Ramon, and I shall repent. 
So if he say vengeance is mine, that doesn't mean you fight. That means you take your hands off it and let him fight for you. Then the Bible declares that he will make your enemies your footstool. In other words, your enemies are going to be the one that's going to help you get to the next level. They'll begin to bless you in ways that they don't even understand why they did what they did. But that's just how God works. God will use people who you wouldn't even thought would promote you in life. Genesis chapter 50, verse 15 through 21 says, When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, It may be that Joseph will hate us and pay us back for all the evil we did to him. So they sent the message to Joseph saying, Your father gave this command before he died. Say to Joseph, Please forgive the transgression of your brothers and their sin because they did evil to you. And now please forgive the transgression of the servants of God of your father. And Joseph wept. He wept because he was hurting because he remembered what they had put him through. Yes. And when they spoke to him, his brothers also came and fell down before him and said, Behold, we are your servants. Now you won't be a servant because you need what I got. Be careful of people who try to use you for what you got. That's why I think I, I thank God today. I got my own car. I got my own job. I got my own crib. Ain't nobody paying for that for me. I thank God that I got my own. And when you got your own, can't nobody tell you nothing. Can't nobody tell me nothing. I don't know about you, but I'm, every time I stand up in this podium, yeah, I'm getting free and free. And they said, do not fear, for I am in the place of God. As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good. To bring it about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. So do not fear, I will provide for you and your little ones. Thus he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. They was coming to try to be a servant because they know they did them down bad. But he said, you are evil against me. But God meant it unto good. And we know that all things work together. Y'all know the rest. In the end of Genesis after Jacob's death, Joseph's brothers begged him to forgive them of their transgressions against him. And when they spoke to him, Joseph wept and said, Do not fear if I am. For am I in the place of God? He realized, I'm that God. I'm going to love you anyway. And that's why you got to get to a point where you got to love people anyway. Amen. I'm going to say it again. You got to love them anyway. Songwriters say, I will love you anyway, even if I cannot stay. Y'all don't, 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 don't And so no matter the plans of others, God's will shall be done. And in spite of everything that Joseph went through, Joseph was the one that was on top yeah, yeah. and going higher. And he was the one that was used to bless the people. Everybody stand. Everybody stand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all received that word today? Amen. Amen. Put your hands together and bless the name of the Lord. Father, we thank you today for your word. Father, I pray right now that somebody has heard something that would encourage their hearts. Not the door in the tower where they are in the process. Father, they may be in a position where they may be the Josephs in the church today. But Father, I think it right now that in spite of everything that they are dealing with and going through, Father, I think it right now that you'll begin to keep and cause their hands to stay clean. Father, I thank you right now for your anointing that's rushing upon their lives. And I thank you for giving them the strength to endure what they are going through. And Father, I ask right now that you would cover them in the midst of their trials, in the midst of their storms, in the midst of their situations. And we give you praise for your peace right now that surpasses all understanding. If there's anybody here today who's not saved and want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You may say, I too was like Joseph. I went through some things in my life, but I'm, I've allowed some situations to get me out of position. I want to let you know today that God cares for you. He's not turning his back on you. He 
He's always there to give you a brand new life. He's there to give you a brand new hope. He's ready to give you victory. And I want to offer Christ to you today. If you're here, you want to be saved. Walk it out. Walk it out. Walk it out. Walk it out. Secondly, you want to walk with God. You're no longer right standing with Him, and you want to renew your commitment. Walk that out this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You who are weary and heavy, when you come. And lastly, you heard the word, and you say, I'm saved. And I want to make the prep out of my church home. We want to love you. We want to care for you. We're in the church that won't judge you where you are, but we love you where you need to be. I want to be your pastor. I want to love on you. I want to go to heaven with you. If you're here today and you're not, you're not saved, and you want to be saved, and you just walk with God, and you're no longer in right standing, all you want is to lay with us in fellowship today. Come on, shake my hand this morning. You may be watching via our streaming on
like it. Uh, nothing like it. Gee, that's what he's a boy to gossip. And then the wild, straight in the name of all of you. Jesus' name, amen. You are dismissed.